just came out to the truck and it said, uh-uh, today, buddy. So I got another one going in. I got the economy. I mean, duh. It's got 300,970 12 miles on it, so. You know, it occurred to me there are probably some of you who have never been picking. You've seen American Pickers on TV. I'm kind of a version of that, only I go looking for car and motorcycle, bicycle, mini bike stuff. This is a three car garage slash shop barn kind of place. It's in Bradenton, Florida, and we're just a couple of minutes away. Coming across the bridge into Bradenton now. Every now and then I have to remind myself that a lot of you guys don't know this area. This is just south of Tampa, about 30 minutes, maybe 45. Cute little town, and like a lot of the towns in this area, a lot of traffic, a lot of restaurants on the water. There's a skate park down there that's really cool. Well, we made it. We're going back behind this house. Compensation, zoom. Compensation, zoom. Compensation. I want to show you two things that I got here just over the last week. A Rupp Zenoa two-stroke, two-cylinder, twin carburetor snowmobile engine that's water-cooled. Found in some guy's barn in Florida. Snowmobile engine. The second cool thing, looks like a small block Chevy intake, doesn't it? Every thermostat housing, temperature uh, sending unit. You have where the distributor goes in the back. No, it's not a small block Chevy at all. Now you may not, even, I didn't know what it was. This is for a 348, the baby brother to a 409. It does not even fit the 409. These two little holes up here, those are the bolt holes that go through and come down right there and right there now see how those ports look very chevy the only giveaway really is see that notch right there but that's for a 348 chevy it's the only one i've ever seen four two barrels on a 348 they call it an offenhauser pace setter so i'm going to uh, join a couple of pages on facebook and get some information on it get some pricing and get this thing up for sale but I knew you guys would dig on that along with the uh, the Rupp engine. And by the way, Rupp, same company that made the mini bikes back in the day. Guy's name was Mickey Rupp. Cool, huh? You gotta stay agile out on these streets, people. Speed bump. Going to look at a V8 S10. It's supposedly been swapped over to an automatic, but you still have to push in the clutch pedal. It's like somebody just didn't do a perfect job, you know, they kind of cut some corners. But I'm going to look at it now, and I figure it's one of the square body S10s, like mid-80s. And it's got a good title, and it's a good price, so let's go check it out. It's about an hour away from here. I'm in my truck, but I don't have a trailer that's capable of hauling that, so i got to stop by the U-Haul at the end of my street and get on the road. Well, I drove a little over an hour to come over here and check out this little truck, and I got it. There she blows, 92 S10. Small block Chevy, automatic. It's a 350, got headers, Flowmasters. The Flowmasters sound killer. Nice set of aluminum wheels, the bed's solid. The door closes the way it should, it's just the way it's sitting. Pretty cool, huh? He works for a tow service, so what we're gonna do is put it on this thing and then take it right off this and put it right on my U-Haul trailer, which I got sitting over there. Oh, the wildlife of Florida. Little critters, man, they're everywhere. This is so much easier. It's mid-November and it's like 88, 89 degrees here today. These square bodies are so cool, right? Dig these, man. Now what he's gonna do, he's gonna bring that up and flatten it up so it lifts the back. So it does like the rollback thing coming all the way up. And we're coming over to that. 
and dropping it down and rolling it off this one onto mine. Now the current status of this truck, the reason I brought the trailer and all that, first of all, it was just me, didn't have anybody coming with me, so I had to get the trailer. Second of all, this one, it's a 92, so it was originally fuel injected. It's now a 350 Vortec carbureted, little 600 vac secondary. You know, the one with a little tube between the primary and secondary side. Anyway, the reason it's, it'll start up and it'll idle, but the fuel pressure is way off because he put in a new fuel pump for the original engine, which is gonna kick your pressure way up and a carburetor obviously would like to have about six, seven pounds right along in there. So the plan right now is to get it on this trailer. I can take it off the trailer just driving it when I get home, but this is what's gotta happen right now. Keep going till you hear crash, I always heard him say. Moan back, moan back. Maybe not. All in all, this is a pretty cool way to swap a truck from one vehicle to the next. He's done this once or twice. Got about a foot. <laughs> he's, he's done this before. I'm such a freaking poser. Oh, now that is so cool. Dude, that makes it so much better. First thing I'm gonna do when I get home is, is obviously burnouts. Close course professional driver never on the roadway, only in Mexico. Yeah, it's pretty cool how the U-Haul trailers do instead of the straps and everything like a normal one. We roll this back on here, we get it so it's over that metal rod, get the tire just past it, and then we get that strap assembly, put it over it, and attach it onto that little tie-down assembly right there, the strap. We're almost there. Another foot. These trailers are not as long as I'd like for them to be. You can put an S10 on there, but it's hard to put on, you know, like a extended wheelbase Suburban or something. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'll strap those down. Well, it's on there. Now see, I was saying these trailers are kind of short. Not a whole lot of room there. But man, it's on there and it's on there great. Love it. Let's get it back home. Now that right there is how a transaction is supposed to occur. Showed up, he was asking X. I said, what about X minus X? And uh, he said, sure. Put it on the trailer. It's a Vortex small block. You know, the ones, uh, the old style small block, but it has four bolts in the middle of the valve cover. It's got an Edelbrock intake, uh, a little 600 Holley. It's an automatic. I'm assuming it's probably a Turbo 350. Uh, but it still has the clutch pedal in it and the way these were those were set up is you had to push in the clutch pedal to start it Since the clutch pedal is still there. So is the switch So you have to push in the clutch to make the automatic start There's an aftermarket shifter headers flow masters that sound fantastic, dude I cannot wait for you to hear this. I hope it comes across as well in video as it does in person You know that big pipe like three inch diameter that real deep sound they have sounded fantastic it's got some problems with the fuel system that i need to figure out but first of all i need to get it home so let's go do that now gotta put some gas in this too it's not picking up a beater unless there's drama i look back i was talking to my buddy on the phone and i glanced back in the rearview mirror and saw that one of the doors on the s10 was wide open and uh if you'll notice it's on the trailer backwards so that could have been interesting I once had a guy ask me, how do you know how to do all these things with vehicles? How do you know how to fix all these things? And I said, well, it comes from having a series of POSs. <laughs> I have the whole door strapped shut because it just decided it was going to be like, no, nah, I'm going wide open. And since it's on the trailer backwards, it just kind of went flying. It was like full extension. <laughs> it was awesome. Anyway, I'm fired up. The truck, I think I'm going to be able to drive it off the trailer and into the backyard. That hood's got to go away. Not a fan of that. I think a flat hood, if it'll fit. Because if you look in there, maybe, maybe not. But we're getting back out on the road. I notice it has a crack in the windshield that kind of bites, but still, all in all, such a cool truck. Yesterday, when the seller started this for just a short time, just to show me that the engine was healthy, 
he poured some gas down the carburetor and I was thinking, I wonder why he had to do that if the fuel pump is on there. So it leads me to believe that maybe this bowl right here just doesn't have any fuel in it. So I'm going to adjust that, the uh, needle and seat, and make it so it's got the right amount of fuel in there. And if that doesn't work, I'll move it on to something else. But as of right now, that's the first plan of attack. New battery. Well, it clean battery from 620. Yeah, I see my first problem already. It's finally stabilized, but see how it's on like uh, 10 pounds? All I have to do to adjust this is uh, I need a 5 8 and an Allen key. I'm going to take it down so that little puppy uh, settles on about six and a half. I can also smell some gas. It's overriding the needle and seat in here. Oh, it fired right up and it's idling now. I don't know if I should put any trust in that at all. So I'm going to go ahead and raise the hood and check that pressure. Yeah, look at that now. Not really sure why it's running on 2 PSI. But it's running. Well, that's a problem. The fuel pump's first of all leaky. Very, very leaky and there's a wire laying in it that's probably the power wire. So I'm gonna let it run for a minute. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire. Yeah, that wire's already been rubbing. I'm gonna still let it run a minute. Yeah. Still showing nothing for fuel pressure. Weird. Well, I got to the end of the street and it died. See if I can get more fuel to go up there to it. Let's sit for a moment. Yeah, it's definitely an issue. Well, I got it to the end of the street and it died. It's really obvious that that uh, carburetor's loading up. Also, no power steering, and either it's got a really high stall, or uh, the tranny's slipping. But as of right now, it's kind of hard to tell. It's a, it's a fuel problem almost exclusively, and of course the door. <laughs> If you're gonna mess with POS's, you gotta be used to and prepared for stuff like doors that open randomly. But, I'm going around the corner. Also, I can't get that shifter down into first or second, just third. It does have a little lump to it but the freaking fuel pump wires hanging down under it. Yeah, this is one of those, if I don't handle some of these things like right now, it's probably gonna burn to the pavement. But for now, shut the thing off, open up the hood, let it cool off. <laughs> that thing still works. Of all the things to work, that works. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here because I'm gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. They gotta order some parts, door panels, dash pads, stuff like that. It'll come back around, but right now it's just, it's gotta be defunkified. Yeah. See you guys on the next video. We'll do some burnouts.